here it is, the report everyone was waiting for, and any reader of your book will not be surprised by this report. No, I mean, I'm very gratified that the Inspector General essentially confirmed everything that I found. We all interviewed the same people. And I think what's really important here is that an independent Justice Department watchdog who reports to Barr and who can be fired by the president has now debunked every sensational claim that President Trump has made about a deep state out to get him. The, the invest, Russian investigation was legitimate. There was adequate predicate. There was no spying on the Trump campaign. None of these preposterous assertions have clearly didn't read the same report I did. And guys, um, one of the things I wish would go away is this constant media myth because it's not true. People keep saying on other networks that I've heard it, the report says there was no political bias, which of course Jim Comey uh, just ran with. That is not what the report says. That is not true. If you read the report, what Horowitz said is he couldn't find documented right. evidence of political bias to initiate the case. That is not the same thing. Nobody would what, admit what he it. Suggest Yes, exactly. Nobody admitted. But what he said at multiple points was he couldn't eliminate political bias as a potential motive. And this was an interesting uh, sequence because the Inspector General's report comes out and then the attorney general makes a statement, as opposed to the Mueller report, where the attorney general got the Mueller report, put out his statement about the Mueller report long before the Mueller report itself came out. And the attorney general today seems to be chasing this inspector general's report, saying, uh, first of all, thank you, great work, we fully respect you. That's the first sentences. And then he says that he believes that there was, in fact, insufficient evidence to begin this investigation. He contradicts this extensive inspector general's report. Uh, I think you have to put this in context. I think the heart of uh, the IG's report really focused on how the investigation was conducted once it got going, and that is especially the very serious abuses of FISA that occurred, much of which has been, in my view, not accurately reported by the press over the last day. Uh, but in, in one area, I do disagree uh, with the IG, and that was whether there was sufficient predication to open a full-blown uh, uh, counterintelligence investigation, specifically using the techniques that they did uh, to collect intelligence about the Trump campaign. Well, I think uh, I, I think probably from a civil liberty standpoint, the greatest danger to our free system is that the incumbent government use the apparatus of the state, principally the law enforcement agencies and the intelligence agencies. Uh, both to spy on political opponents, but also uh, to use them in a way that could affect the outcome of the election. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time in history that this has been done. And I think when you step back here and say, what was this all based on? Uh, it's not sufficient. Remember, there was and, and never has been any evidence of collusion. And yet this campaign and the president's administration has been dominated by this investigation into what turns out to be completely baseless. Well, I think what we're seeing is that President Trump and his allies, including the attorney general, are essentially weaponizing what is supposed to be the nonpartisan job of the inspector general as they did with the Mueller report. Mueller, they did it before, now they're doing it after, but, they, but Barr is essentially spinning these facts. He says, oh, it's only the thinnest of evidence on which the Russia investigation was begun. That is not what this report says. It lays out all of the facts, the compelling facts, that the evidence was there. The United States faced a very grave threat to its national security and that crimes were possibly being committed. What was this all based on? Uh, it's not sufficient. Remember, there was and, and, and never has been any evidence of collusion. The job of the FBI, its essential mission, is to investigate claims like that. It had to look into these things. It wasn't thin evidence. It was very serious evidence that any American citizen would be worried about if they had been confronted with it. And we, we've never seen an attorney general come out and basically disagree with an inspector general's report.
And we, we've never seen an attorney general come out and basically disagree with an inspector general's report. No, this is unprecedented. Not only that, Barr has commissioned yet another major investigation into the origin of the Russia investigation, the, the so-called Durham investigation. And, and, and John Durham put out a statement today saying we disagree with this inspector general. And he, that is also shocking that somebody who's still conducting the investigation would rush out and criticize the inspector general report. The real meat of Horowitz's work and the real thrust of the report actually deals with the conduct of the investigation, where I think it quickly became apparent that it was a travesty. Uh, and there were many abuses, and that's by far the most important part of the report, and I think Mike Horowitz would agree with that. The abuses, these are, I want to come on to these in detail, but yeah. the abuses that in particular refer to the Pfizer application, the application to the Pfizer, to the... And, to and, the, and, also, the the and also the fact that from day one it generated exculpatory information and nothing that substantiated uh, any kind of collusion. But put that aside for a minute, going back to the issue. In many ways, sort of the issue of whether it technically was adequately predicated is something of academic interest uh, only. But uh, where I disagree, and, and by the way, you know, Mike knows I disagree with him, and uh, there's still people in this town where you can have, where, you know, you, you can be adults and professionals and have disagreement without tearing each other's hearts out. So it's just one of those things. We have disagreements in the Department of Justice. And let me also add, um, the Inspector General said he interviewed, or he reviewed over a million documents, interviewed 700 witnesses. How much time? I mean, this has spent months of, of government employee time. I, I can't even calculate how much of the taxpayer money has spent on something. And there is essentially nothing new here. We knew the origins of the Russia investigation. We knew the Steele dossier had nothing to do with it. We knew the Steele dossier had nothing to do with it. That's a lie. There were seven lies or omissions in a spy warrant to spy on an innocent American citizen. He had no explanation. Not only were there seven, in the three renewals to continue mm -hmm. to spy on Carter Page, they added ten more, as right. if seven lies weren't enough. And then they interviewed Steele's source in January. January. They renew the warrant three times despite knowing, guys, knowing conclusively Steele's source said this is all garbage. Yes. Comey needs to just come clean. Right. Yes, he found some irregularities here, irregularities here and there in the FISA application. Those should be addressed and corrected. But even he admitted that if all of those were corrected, he can't say the result would be any different. And so now... The taxpayers were supposed to finance another investigation into the same question. Is this going to go on forever until Trump and Barr get the answer they want? Uh, Christopher Steele, is it fair to say that he had a political bias against Donald Trump? Um, he, given who he was paid for, there was a bias that needed to be disclosed to the court. Does it seem that he all personally had a bias, not just because he's on the payroll of the Democratic Party, but he... Well, we found in the course of this and heard from Mr. Orr about his comment to him that he was desperate to prevent uh, Mr. Trump's election. Again, this is the, the guy that provides the dossier that gets the warrant over the top against Carter Page. He's paid for by the Democratic Party, and he personally believes it's bad for Donald Trump to win. He's marketing the dossier, which is a bunch of garbage, to anybody and everybody. And I think what's really important here is that an independent Justice Department watchdog who reports to Barr and who can be fired by the president has now debunked every sensational claim that President Trump has made about a deep state out to get him. People have to understand the role of the uh, IG. You know, we are an agency that makes discretionary decisions every day, thousands of them, and the internal watchdog, his general approach, and it's the right approach, and I respect it, is, is to say, look, uh, if the people involved give me reasonable explanations for what they do, that is, their, their explanation is not unreasonable on their face, and I can't find any documentary or testimonial evidence that contradicts it, I will accept it. And that's what happened here. He said, I haven't found evidence of improper motive. He did not, as contrary to what a lot of the media is reporting, he did not find there was no improper motive. He didn't find evidence of improper yeah, motive. The evidence of 
absence of evidence is not the evidence right. of absence, right? But, so Christopher Wray, the FBI director, similarly said yesterday in response to the report that the, the, the report did not find, we did not find political bias or improper motivation. Again, you, do, do you challenge that? No, I'm just saying what, what the IG found. The IG said, I, didn't f I uh, did not find documentary or testimonial evidence contradicting the, reason, you know, the explanations that were given me, and I accepted them. He, he is not definitively ruling that there was no bias. I think that's why we have Durham. Well, the